Good evening and welcome to the Brookfield Selectman's meeting of Tuesday, December 18th, 2018. Would you like to stand and join me in saluting the flag? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Good evening. I would like to entertain a motion to approve expense warrants for 12-11-18 for $39,273.26 and approve another and a payroll warrant for 12-5-18 for $166,496.63. You have that motion. Second. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Then we have uh, to approve the in executive session meetings, uh, they will be vote to approve and released of 6 18 18. You have that motion to second approve. All in favor? Aye. 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 Announcements a reminder that a winter parking ban is in effect from November 15th to April 1st for all public ways in the town during the hours of 11 p.m. and 6 a.m. No parking on the streets. Whether or not snow is predicted or anyone in violation will receive a citation of $25 for the first offense. And then we have another announcement. The town hall will close at, at noon, Monday, December 24th, and will be closed Christmas Day and to reopen Wednesday, December 26th. The town hall also will close at noon on Monday, December 31st, and on New Year's Day to reopen Wednesday, January 2nd. And Merry, uh, happy holidays and a happy new year to all. And then I have another announcement to make also this evening. Uh, our, our tax rate has been set this year, and uh, it's it's eighteen dollars and ninety five cents per thousand, and it's gone down nineteen cents from last year. And I would like to uh, thank the financial team for all the hard work that they put in on it. Yes. Good news? Yes, second good year news. Second, second year in a row. It's gone down. Okay, our first thing on the agenda tonight is appointments. We have an appointment here. We can probably take them and vote them in at once. We have a, an appointment for the Cultural Council with a term to expire June 30th, 2019 for Jonathan Landry. And then we also have an appointment as ADA coordinator with the term to expire June 30th, 2019 for Kathy Rocker. You, you got one more. You guys did follow Yeah, we did. Oh, we didn't make an appointment slip, that's fine. Oh, okay. Yep. And then we have another one for an alternate building inspector. And his name is, I don't know, of course, attempt to say it, John Zachar Ritzlitz. Ritzlitz. But, yeah. uh, so I would like a, a motion to entertain to uh, appoint these three. Motion to appoint. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, we'll hand those on to Beth. Agenda is to sign the Center for Living and Working Invoice. That was when we had the uh, Brookfield had the, the self evaluation and the transition plan that was done for the uh, hand, all the handicap accessibility. And I'd like a, the, the cost of that. It was a grant, it was $24,600. And I'd like a, uh, a motion that we can sign this. Motion to pay. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye.
Okay, the next one here is to sign the BETA invoice and contract amendment. And this also is, let's see, where is that? Okay. This was on the, uh, the Finney property. Yep, okay, that's seat. for an extension till um, March 29, 2019. And I would like the- uh, Motion to sign and accept the extension. Second. second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And this is part of the CBGD? monies and the extension is no further cost to us it's just they need more time to accomplish the scope of work correct yep, yep. yep. back to the testing yep didn't they do testing on that they did ago? and they they did and, and that was why we're doing it again because there was some concern as to what it was supposed to say what it didn't say okay. right. it's just, just the one Oh, the invoice too. Oh, okay. All three of us have to do that. I'd like to take a vote to sign the invoice. Motion to sign the invoice. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. some wage authorizations. Uh, do we want to take these individual or only? This is all one, but they. Okay, uh, this is from the Water Department. Uh, they want to appoint an interim superintendent, and that will be Bruce Clark. And the, it's a bi-weekly salary of $2,292.08. Then we have another one here from the highway department from Matthew Langevin in the position as emergency operator and that salary is $19.86. And then a board, one from the Board of Health for a James Milner. He will be the transfer station manager uh, and the salary, uh, hourly rate will be $16.45. And then we have one here also from from Sharon Mahoney from the Planning Board for Christine Wiseman, who will be their new clerk, and the salary hourly wage will be fifteen dollars an hour. Motion to approve. Second. All in, any questions or anything from anyone? All in favor? Aye. Aye. the one back from the library. No, that's not. That didn't come back because it was it was uh, wasn't made already. Oh no, we did not get it. Back. Okay. Okay. The next one on our agenda is to sign the open space contract agreement. So there's two pieces to this. <clears throat> there's a contract with the state that's this document yeah, okay. and that that document is straightforward uh, it's a 80 percent grant uh, for ten thousand dollars for the open space work that would be done between now and next year and so that's all set what 
was confusing was that there was a misunderstanding from CMRPC and they, the document that they sent us was for $12,000 that w we should vote tonight that it should match the $10,000 and CMRPC just will fi will update and we can, if we vote to sign for $10,000. What that's, the proviso there is that the committee and Kathy LaRocca will spend roughly 100 hours over an eight month period mm -hmm for uh, support of the grant at 25 bucks an hour that ends up to be 2,500 bucks, which is the 20% that the town owes. So it would be our in-kind part of the grant activity. Okay, that's so, so I'd make the grant that, that we'd sign the um, Commonwealth's contract and we would update the CMRPC agreement to match and have that signed by CMRPC. I would like to make a motion then to have the chair sign these uh, contracts. Motion. Uh, second. Yes. I, th oh. I, I thought oh. you made the motion. Oh. I, I thought you made oh. the motion. Yeah, I made the motion. Yeah, oh, so I second. Okay. So I'm just waiting to vote. Any discussion or anything? Um, on? The one question I had, and this is related to some correspondence that I, I passed on uh, to Karen, I don't know if it got to everybody, is that. Um, as part of the open space plan, we probably need to talk about the, the future of the beach. It definitely. Uh, um, I had an in-depth conversation. There was an email that I forwarded a, a, a couple times, actually. Yeah. Um, and then uh, um, I had an in-depth discussion with the chair of the rec committee, Jeff Landine. And uh, they just they don't have the bandwidth to support it. Um, one of the recommendations that have been getting kicked around would be either to, if the open space committee was willing to um, at least weigh in on what they think a good plan might be, or if we want to solicit for maybe a three or five person subcommittee that REC was willing to oversee a subcommittee, but the people currently on REC just don't feel that they have the bandwidth to, to put the time into it, then they'd be willing to entertain that. So. Um, I don't know how you all feel about it. If I, I know you have more contact with the Open Space Committee. I don't know if anybody from that committee yeah, has I, any interest. I don't see them. Beach and I, I did talk to uh, QQLA rep, and they don't have the any bandwidth. To, yeah. to, and it really boils down to um, the feeling that at least the conversation over the last weekend with a couple of people were with the, those that are using the beach. It really hasn't become a town beach. It's now become a, a regional beach right. for others than, than Brookfield. And so they're a bit frustrated that uh, we ought to just turn it back over to the state. Yeah, I, I think, I mean, there's some frustration on both sides of that argument because I think there's been um, uh, many of the condition issues have nothing to, to do with the individuals using the beach. Some of it is erosion. Oh, and, uh, and that's and also stuff true. like that. Yeah. So some of it is just the overall condition of the beach would, would require a substantive investment. So unless a group is willing to step forward who wants to really take ownership of it, then we may be in a position where, where we do need to let it go. Yeah. So we may have, uh, again, this it will be definitely part of the open space dialogue for sure because yeah. it was on the list the first round that we had earlier in the, in the year and so we'll have to talk more about it but again it, there's lots of emotion around it right now that we just got to figure it was a nice it, was it is a nice, nice. Yeah, yeah. And, I, and I think there's a level of frustration because I know um, uh, Ian the gentleman that, that set up the whole cleanup had, had also been uh, looking to bring some materials in and apparently got somehow that all got derailed yeah, which is contributing to the to the state of the beach yep um, but the walkway pathways major mm -hmm. renovation needs to be done right exactly yep so what we should do is this should, we should get this on the cal uh, calendar for january yes. and we uh, again separate and distinct to see if we can get some volunteers or we'll just have to pick and, up. And get a couple of members of the uh, recreation. Maybe we can get Jeff to come in and maybe we can get Ian to come in and we can probably talk to the two of them about it yeah. and see how they feel. I think Ian actually resigned. He did. Oh, did he? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. He's going to do open space. Yeah. So he'll, he, but, and, he, and his focus will be the playground. Right. But that, and, and quite honestly, back to uh, the open space contract and kind of bring, coming all full mm -hmm. circle what this round of open space contracts are talking about is that you have to actually do something at moving forward. Right. And one of the projects that has been on the Rex list has been the playground because the playground is not uh, necessarily compliant yeah. 
for today's standards mm -hmm. and so that there needs to be major work done to it and with the quotes that Ian has gotten that would be a, a, a neat little project that yes, could be so done maybe. under an open space grant mm -hmm. So, so, so that would be nice. Yeah. 80 20. That's important. Yep. Again, 80 so 20. We would just again. Have, so we would just have to get the either payment in kind or, or additional right. and, funds from town meeting. And the thought that Ian and I had was if Herb would do the, or Highway would do the groundwork, yeah. half of the cost of the playground was the groundwork. Ground work. Oh, wow. So, so, so that right. would be an I'm easy sure. So sure. I, again, would a lot of loose ends oh, to see sure. what you had to pull together, but I think yeah. it may be something that could work. And if important, we get up to compliance because we don't want to have any problems. Anybody hurt, if exactly. Anybody hurt. Yeah. Yep. And then, then like you were saying with the beach, uh, we should get the feelings of the uh, rec commission, Jeff, how he feels about maybe appointing some kind of a subcommittee so they can oversee it. Well, the, the problem is they don't have anybody currently on the committee that's willing to take it on. So the only way that not they would... To, no. Not no. even to oversee it? No. no. They're having a tough time getting coaches. No. So they, they just don't yeah. have the bandwidth. So we would either need someone to step forward to to, to oversee it. It's really too bad because I mean, we used to have such, you'd have an overflow of people who wanted to coach and we had the beach going. It's, it, it's, it's too bad. I know people today, they're very busy with you know their everyday lives and I think that has a lot, a lot to do with it. Well, it really comes to it. Our, our generation, yeah. Linda, yeah. we need to think yeah. about volunteering and, right. and our age group needs to That's come forward right. because it, it, oh, yeah. To think about retirement, you, we really need to think about what yeah. we can give back yeah. to the town. Well, it, changing from that for a minute, the same thing. We had a church event that went on on Saturday, no, Sunday. It was a Christmas party for the children. And um, it was, we're, we're the new committee taking over, and we, you know, we're all the, same, all the same age. And, you know, you, you would think that maybe that some of the parents of the children would take over, but they don't have they, they don't have they any don't have time. So, yeah. you know, or it's, the a, time. It's, the same, it's the same thing with everything. Yeah. So you got to work it. Yeah, that's what you have to do. Any volunteers out there, come on down. <laughs> We've got plenty of stuff you yeah, can do. Yeah, we have all kinds of volunteers. So we need to vote that so you can sign okay. it. Oh, I thought we voted already. No, we didn't. No. That was the discussion. We had a discussion. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I'm signed two to vote on this. Okay. On the, um, the contract and the agreement. Yeah. Okay, we, want to, we sign on the contract. I'd like to have yep. a motion to sign the agreement and a motion to sign the contract. You have those motions. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Our next one is declare surplus, and this is from Chief Martell. He said the 1986 GMC chassis is now surplus properties. Please ask the board to allow me to dispose on Unibid. Thanks, Peter. Motion to dispose. Second. Great job. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, that's done. Okay. Do we want to get going a little early here? We on can't. The, um, we can't. Oh, we can't. We can't. Yeah, we can take stuff out of order. I'll make a motion to take the other items out of order. Okay. I'll, yeah, I'll second that motion. No. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, this is special use permits some more for the for the ponds. Uh, this is for 72019 at uh, Quay the Aluminum Fishing Series. The next one is uh, South Pond, the Aluminum Fishing Series, and that is for 72019. And this this one is for 915.19 for South Pond. It's also the aluminum fishing series. And the last one here is for Quaybog Pond for 929.19, and it's the D97. I'd like to have a motion that motion, these can motion be signed. Motion to sign the special use permits for Second. the ponds. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, and this is signed by
Our next one on the agenda is to sign the um, contract from the state for the Cultural Council and the, it's money they get every year in the amount of $8,923.87 and a vote to allow the chair to sign these. Motion to sign. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And to go along with the reduction in the tax rate, looking at our agenda, We've had a good night as far as the numbers of grants and yes. funds coming to the town. Right, and still getting stuff done. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's kind of a neat trick. Yeah. Okay, now these are to set some meeting dates. That's the yep. next thing on our agenda. Okay. Um, January 8th. Yep. Um, I'll, if, I, if I can attend, sure. it will be telephonically because I'm going to be uh, potentially uh, not available. Okay. Is, do you know if there's much going for that? Um, there's nothing on it right now. I know it. Well, you just said you wanted to have um, Jeff in so we can make it the second one in January. So yeah, not, not so far, not to say there won't be by then. Right. But we'll try to make it. Well, another issue is, is that the ZBA has a hearing that they set for 6 o'clock. They've assured me they'll be done by 6.30, but I don't know about that. Worst case scenario, we can have it in the selectman's office. So I'll try to make it a light agenda just in case that happens. And since you probably mm -hmm. won't. Yeah. Or unless, if you guys are up to it, we could just do back to back to the 15th and the 22nd. Well, let's wait and see. If, if it becomes too busy and I have to put a lot on, then that's what we'll do. If I can get away with it being a light agenda, then yeah, it's yeah. fine. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so we have January 8th and the 22nd, yep. February 5th and the 19th, and March 5th and, and the 19th. Okay. A motion to? Motion to set those dates. Second. Uh, while we're talking about dates, back to open space. Karen, could you reserve this room for the 16th at 6.30? Yeah, I'm not to mention that. I'm going to start. So I'm gonna, I don't have the, major, I don't have the uh, master password to post that. I, mean, I can reserve it in that. I can put it up on my wall calendar. Yeah. Just do you want me to ask Mike to yeah, post would, it? Would you, yeah. yeah. Okay, would you do the agenda, though? I'll, I'll send, I'll send, send this. It yeah. Right. yeah. It's actually going to be Sam or PC's meeting, but I'll send it. Yeah. 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 So I'd like to have a motion that will set these dates. Yeah, you have that motion. Okay. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. The next one is. Oh, these came. Oh, this is. Um, we have to sign this. This came from the Commonwealth of Math. It's on the. Uh, licensing authority certification for the change of location for the Central Street package. What it is, it is, although you already have the hearing, yeah, we and you have voted and agreed, there's an additional paper that you just have to sign off on. Okay. Good motion to sign. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. 
nothing on them. Conservation should be at the police station. See what the agenda is. Yeah, we'll see what it Use is. Use the office. Okay, uh, then under our correspondence, it's the DCR order to prepare action plan for the dams. Uh, we got something in here from the state on the. It's an order to prepare an emergency action plan for the potential dam. The one at Sawmill Pond. And the other one is the Cooley Hill Reservoir Dam, and so. Uh, so the one on the sawmill pond will be taken care of by the highway, and then um, a co the other copy went to the buyer's lawyer who is purchasing the Cooley Hill Dam, and they don't have any objection to that. Okay. So far. So, so far. So far. So that's it for that. And, and okay. Okay, so um, whoop, we're going to do a couple others, so yeah. we get a couple that's minutes. About, yeah. That's about it. I'll let you go first. Okay, oh, okay. Uh, the senior center meeting the other day, I attended that meeting and uh, probably two thirds of the conversation centered around uh, the viability of the senior center in, in the room. Uh, the way I left it with the, the discussion was that the worst case, because now we have an architect that we're, that's essentially free to the town, it's costing $2,000 of the architect's cost that the town has had to pony up mm -hmm. but the 2000 in the scheme of it is not a lot of money to get some actual drawings so, so that we can figure out what is possible mm -hmm. downstairs uh, there was a study done before yeah. and uh, Andrew tried to explain all of that but mm -hmm. it, it just was frustration on the part of a number of the attendees that you know should we actually do this and, and as I left it I, I said at least we'll find out if there's showstoppers of having anything yeah. in the basement uh, uh, one of the things that came up was where the entrance might be and because of the parking lot and, and all the rest they were looking for, to have some sort of uh, uh, patio area out behind the building here as the access into the building and what that does is that takes away from parking so you have a loose tight that way the other thing that comes uh, to bear is that when I want to say Warren did their town hall they put a senior center in the basement and one of the things that came through with that is that they couldn't have an inside stairwell to the senior center. It had to be all, at, the access all had to be from the outside. And so, again, it's another, uh, what do you do about that? And so, um, at least now we have an architect that's hired that's going to come up with drawings to understand where the issues are so that we can de decide once and for all whether or not we spend the money. And again, they're talking a million bucks to, to do it oh, and, and uh, uh, to rehab it. But uh, at least we'll now know whether it's practical or not to spend any more money in that area. And we've talked, it's, it's really a shame, we've talked about having you know, a senior center for years here in town. And, and I know, it's, it would be nice if we could get, you know, a good part of that grant money to do it. Exactly. Well, and the other thing was there was a, a lot of discussion about regionalizing services yeah. and the like. We do a lot of regionalization of services today, but then the question was, why can't we do more? Yeah, why can't so, Again, so like I say, two-thirds of the conversation was on feasibility yeah. and sharing, and one-third was what would a senior center want to look yeah. like. And I know that Mrs. Clancy had talked about, um, she's the chair of the Council on Aging, she had talked about joining West Brookfield. Right. And, so that I, came, and that came up. And uh, I hadn't heard much more on that, if, if they're in agreement with them right. or not. Well, I did attend, and probably a good thought, um, is I attended the SAMRPC uh, Elder Affairs uh, se session two weeks ago, mm -hmm. where they brought in three speakers as to uh, how to address, because again, Elder issues, it is understood that the 65 plus population is going to double in the next 10 years in southern Worcester County. And what do you do? Uh, one, of the, the, uh, one of the speakers was from um, Sturbridge, 
and she does a program with folks that have dementias, dementia, and they have they bring their care take, care uh, taker or, or caregiver uh, to come to the meetings and what and she and what she was expressing was some of the uh, best practices of, of that session, and she encouraged us to participate as well. So they have 12 people today, and they could accept probably double that number, um, and more or less it encouraged it, us. Brookfield to attend if we would like. So I thought that was really good. Yeah, the NFS would include us. You know, it's really a shame we don't have, you know, a space for it because, you know, like so many, like not Brookfield, I mean, they have um, different classes that go on, you know, they do exercise <coughs> classes, what they don't do up there, they have little fashion shows, and then the same thing with Spencer, they have quite a program down in the town of Spencer also. It's really, it's really a shame we don't have anything here. You're working. We have to work on it. Yeah. Maybe Beth is too young for it right now, but <laughs> <laughs> no. But if we start now, I might we might get it all set by the time I get there. Yeah. By the time we'll get be there. done. Yeah. <laughs> so Beth had something and it's seven. I did. I had something uh, cool? relatively quick. Um, I just wanted we'll give to give you ten seconds. <laughs> okay. If you give me ninety, I promise I can make it. Okay. All right. Uh, is uh, the East Brookfield bridge work that needs to happen that results in it's it's kind of a bizarre situation because they have to do a temporary land taking but they're only taking land basically of from of their own from the yeah. state so um, there is a basically like a bypass option with mass general law that allows us to basically put together some sort of expert ad hoc committee that determines that it has no impact on the town that we could then just send a formal letter back and it would keep us from having to incur any like real legal costs associated with that so with y'all's permission i wanted to uh, basically put together that ad hoc committee with uh, police chief um, ems uh, highway um, conservation commission and then my if I was going to recommend myself as a representative from the board of selectmen yes, we do a five person committee we hold one meeting we discuss all the impacts we do a formal letter to East Brookfield and to the contractor and we're done yeah fine. makes total okay. sense I don't have any problem with that at all awesome awesome but yeah there's fortunately there's no private landowners in that space so the the taking is a lot less complicated and it is only temporary for the period of the work well thank you for wanting to you know get that going it's quite well Okay, a little past seven, but we are going to open up. We have a second. We had last uh, two weeks ago. We had a hearing, and we've continued it to, to tonight on the uh, Brookfield Auto at 14 Post Road. Would you gentlemen like to come up and have a seat? Meeting. But our last meeting, one of them was, have you gotten a um, business certificate yet from the town clerk? Right. We didn't go. The reason is because uh, we got we got the actual form, and uh, the business certificate that you were mentioning is uh, doing business as certificate. And in Massachusetts, you know, Brookfield Auto is a legal entity in itself, and it's doing business in its own name. So there's no. It's, it's like impossible to file on the top of it another business certificate. Like if Brookfield Auto, for example, was doing business as, uh, uh, I don't know, some other name, then we would go as a Brookfield Auto and obtain a certificate, you know, doing business as a certificate in that other name. But, and the business entity that is registered with the Secretary of State is the same as the, almost like a human being. It's a separate entity that is doing business in its own name. So. But still people have come up though and filed business certificates with us. So does Mike agree? Does Mike, does Mike Sari agree with well, that? Uh, the, the point is that, you know, one, first of all, there's two different types of legal liability. Because the reason people are filing the Secretary of State at the state level is to protect the business, the people that own the business, you know, to, to, you know from whatever, any kind of liability that could you know, occur. So if something happens in the business, I'm not personally liable. Uh, it's the business that's doing business, and that's like all over the state. That's the rule. That's the law. 
And if I go and file this certificate, that means if somebody, God forbid, you know, falls on you know, a parking lot or whatever, and the insurance company has a million dollar coverage or whatever, and somebody's suing for $2 million, they're gonna go directly after me instead of you know, the, whatever the business uh, you know, has the coverage for. That's the reason people are doing LLCs or you know, corporations, you know, all these entities that you file at the level of Secretary of State. If you do file on the top of it a doing business as, first of all, it's not even designed for that purpose, but also it's going to conflict with this particular, you know, purpose. So legally, it's going to be a huge conflict. It's, 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 not, it's not legally possible. Let's well, I was, I was the town clerk for over 20 years. I can show you too. And people that had these LLCs, that all, they used to come in and register their businesses. And so that the business, if people wanted to know if they were a licensed business in the town of Brookfield, a registered business. Right, but and like I've I say, I've never heard any. I've never heard anything like you, you've told us before. It's also written here. You can, you can, read, you know, you can look at it. Yourself. I don't know. I've been gone since 2010. I don't think things have changed that much in eight years. Yeah. But but people can do it. It's not that they cannot do it. It just doesn't make any sense. So, Linda, a recommendation because it, actually the, the permit is the, the key touch to this evening. Yeah. So, the, the, I mean, the requirement yeah, of us going continue. forward would be that Mike would have to sign off yeah. that he does not have to have a business certificate from yeah. the town. Okay. So, it, as, a, as, a, as a condition of yeah. uh, any agreements that we make tonight, mm -hmm. that you would meet with the town clerk, sure. verify of any documents that need to be signed as far as a business certificate, because I think what did come up the last time was some confusion as far as contact yeah. information mm -hmm. and the That's been fixed. And, and that document would, pro would have provided uh, better uh, information as far as contact information right. and the like. So it, there may be a value in filling out the form. Yeah, except there's a legal liability. But, uh, you, uh, I mean, I'm willing to talk to him. Not yeah. only that, we can get somebody from the Secretary of State on the phone, on the speaker that's phone, the and the talk over there and clarify the problem. Yeah. I don't think it's a big deal. That's, that's the job. So you should probably come up and talk to Mike. Sure. Tomorrow. He'll be here. His office will be here from two to eight tomorrow. Usually two to eight. Two to eight, eight tomorrow. Wednesday. When is he there? Two to, two to eight, eight tomorrow, and then usually he's oh. here at nine a.m. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'll call him first to make sure that mm -hmm. what, what time he wants to meet. Yeah, and he's extension 12. Okay, thanks. His card's on the paperwork. Okay. Yeah. So I have a conversation with Mike to make sure. Sure. Okay. <clears throat> and one of the other things on it. Mm, was we had asked to, we found out, and I think uh, Karen said that Beth had also agreed to see your log from the last year on who you sold um, vehicles to. I have the log. I can give it to you maybe a little bit later. The reason I found out, like, I think, what was it? Uh, two o'clock. Two, yeah. Around two o'clock, I wasn't even in town when I found out that yeah, this was a requirement. Yeah. And, you know, I mean... Because we found have... out from town council right. that legally we can ask for Sure, I mean, I don't mind, it's just, you know, I just need a little bit more time. And the next thing here, we want to know, if, I guess... Current complaints are clear. Current complaints are all clear, and this one was one... Um, hmm. uh, he's Mike? here today. He, he's in the office. Is he in? No, he's not. How do you Sorry. say that? Your son is ill. Son is ill. I was talking about Mike. No. How do you say his last name here? Mike Mastrianto? You'll have to you'll have to try. You're Italian then. <laughs> Mike Mastrianto. Mastro Mastro okay, he had some problems here with uh, I guess with you on some tires he had bought. Mm -hmm. For a 20, 20, 28-year-old Volvo, and um, said that said that Cooper was better than his old tires. Or he brought well, him online. I, I actually spoke to him at like. Did you? Um, they told him online. Yeah, I did. I, I spoke to him at like because it was it was a uh, uh, he, he happened into the office actually when I was here the other day, um, and uh, there were a couple of different. 
aspects of this that, that I, I still don't know that I'm, I'm totally comfortable with, um, though I don't know how much recourse um, we have in, in this body. But, um, it, and, I, and I was hoping that he'd be here tonight with some more information because it, it sounded like there wasn't even really a minimum due diligence done with the tire mounting and balancing that, that the stems were basically left the original stems on that the tires weren't properly balanced. Um, I know I've had bad experiences with shops myself and, and them not properly balancing tires when they put them on there. I did, I was concerned where I understand what you're saying where you didn't feel he could return the tires a week later. I mean, from what you said the other day, but there is, I, I don't know if when he first came back to you, it was within the time frame for state of Massachusetts where you can pretty much return anything if, if you're not satisfied from a standpoint of vehicle. And I'm very concerned that it sounds like none of the warranty information was ever passed on to him so that if there was any issue with the tires in the future, it sounded like he didn't really do due diligence and, and pass through the information related to the original tire purchase. Well, Mike was in our shop every day, so at any given point, he could have said something. Yeah, but it sounds like when he did say something to you, it wound up going south pretty quick. He threatened us. Now? That's when it went south, yeah. He threatened you. Correct. Well, he's not here to speak for himself. He's right there. Is he? Oh, he's sitting he's right there. He threatened. I shook him down. This is ridiculous. Every time there's a problem with these guys, they turn it on to somebody else. The last thing I heard is I went in and tried to shake them down to get them, you know, now this guy threatened them? Mike, would you like to, uh, uh, are you Mike or Arthur? Excuse me? Are you Arthur or Mike? I'm Michael. Michael, Michael. would you like to come up and speak on this? Um, yeah, I never threatened him. He threatened me in his tone of voice. Um, he told me that he wasn't going to replace the tires, and it was in an assault tone of voice. It was an assault. Mm -hmm. And then he told me to leave his premises because he wasn't going to fix the tires. And just to make something, the ball tires worked better than the tires that he bought from another dealer in Spencer. So on the third one, he made me believe that he could go into a tire warehouse and get the tires for less than Walmart. The tires we looked at on the computer, he told me they were discontinued because they're only available through one. I've been using them. The tires that he gave me are for an all-wheel drive vehicle. Mm -hmm. They're terrible in the snow. I can't drive in the snow. I was going to get a job driving the plow. Now I can't get to the job. He's been playing me since the middle of August. He thinks I'm old. I thought Joe Smalley took that dealership over because it's such a huge dealership. He wanted me to hook him up with Joe Smalley at the auction and he was talking about getting him a $100,000 loan. He said he had another $100,000 to match it. I think that's baloney too. I worked for George Butler Chevrolet for about nine years when I was young in high school with Mr. Butler, it was a first class house. I also worked for the Central Mass Auto Auction from 1999 to 2006 when it was on Shrewsbury Street and it's in Worcester. This guy's both of them are full of baloney. They lie, they're constant lies. He's got a girl over there and he said, he had me, the fire chief said they couldn't get the hoses through the fence. I worked for six hours out there in the hot sun clearing that and chopping trees down so the fire chief could get his thing through. I figured he was gonna help me out. He just kept shoving it up my behind. I mean, both of these guys, they're both con artists. This guy especially on the right. He's the biggest con artist I ever seen. I spent 36 over the years driving over the road in my own trucks. I own Mike's Trucking Company. It's in the State Commerce Commission license number 202568. I've seen it just about every trip into the book. There's nothing this can t tell me, either one of them, that I haven't seen before. But the two of them, I would pretend the lawyer, was bait and switch, he played with me. Then he sent me to the auction to pick up cars for him two times. His secretary wants to sell me every kind of drug in the world. They're over there smoking weed in the daytime. I mean, is this what you want for a business in the time? 
We're both piranhas. <coughs> Oh, that's it? I have a real, real dry guy. It's horrible in the snow. For those five, it's horrible. I've been using these good years high since I moved here in 2007. Well, what I would think is <coughs> if they have input, we should ask for that input now. But, so, there, just for a second. Yep, yeah, so, no. would you ask for a public comment? I know uh, no, no. Public comment. Not a question. Public comment. Do you have a comment? If we if we determine that we can ask that question, we will ask that question. So you're directing it to the board. We're okay. looking for public comment. In the last input. meeting, these gentlemen mentioned they were collecting for toys for talks. Okay. And they basically said they were doing Okay, so that that's your que yeah. uh, question. Okay, all right, and that that question then came to the board. The chairman can direct that question to them. Do you have an answer to this question that you're not registered with the Marines? I can actually. Um, the we did it with a group of businesses that did it through a four-wheel drive club in the state of Massachusetts. Actually, they were the second biggest collector, and they appreciated it. There was another question on our Facebook about the same subject, where it was questioned as to why we weren't registered. We did it through a secondary group. Um, there were several businesses besides ourselves that did collect and did participate. Um, we did it at expense to our store. We did pay for all the product that we did put out to the customers. They did come in and get free oil changes. It's an $80 oil change that we paid for out of our pocket. We did not make anything really out of it. Uh, for people that had already had their oils changed, we gave them a certificate to come back and get it done. So, um, yes, we did get it, do it, to reach out to the community to try to let them know that it is safe and good to come into our store again. That things have changed to meet the staff and those who have. Um, we have, God, I have a stack of emails, a stack of Facebook compliments, and thank yous for the way that they were treated. So. We can give you all those as well. Could we see them to look sure, at? Certainly. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of them. Yeah, that's the email. Yeah. That's different. There's all that one. This one is uh, yeah, something totally down. different. Yeah, we just, so is this the same? Yes, the same one. Okay. All right, we have two of the same. Oh, this is on the... That one's on the uh, yep. that. Yeah. Yeah, that's a statement from um, she's a former employee of ours. She couldn't be here this evening, but she did do a statement for us because she is working. Also, the gentleman who was our mechanic at the time who did do the balancing of the tires and all that for Michael, he couldn't be, he was going to try and be here, but unfortunately, he's still working. He said if we needed to get him on the phone, he'd be more than willing to take a phone call from us. If you'd like to speak to him over the phone, just to answer your questions, if you'd like, because he did do the work. He did do all the work on the vehicle, on Michael's car. Um, also, you have the original invoice that I asked you for. That's the original. I don't want that one. I don't want the copies, please. So, let me copies for everyone. 
this exactly what Michael paid us? And the reason that that's like that? No, we don't have that. Because Michael didn't pay us right away. I actually kept forgetting. He kept reminding me. Because he did give us two shuttle rides. He didn't even want to charge me. I told him I would pay somebody else to do it. I would definitely, there's no way I was going to not pay him. Michael, if you'd like a copy of this, you're more than welcome to have it. Um, I just didn't want to read it aloud. And then there was, oh, there's Neil, yes. Uh, there's you can have it. What's that? They're, they're in dispute. Yes. Um, yes. I have another question for the selectmen on how have you raised it. Yeah. In the last meeting, you asked them to bring in a record of everything they resolved for former complaints. And I'm curious if when you see this record of the corrected complaints. Last meeting, they, they were asked specifically by you guys. Next meeting, bring in documentation to show you've done something. Yeah, I was the one that made that statement, yeah. actually. I was the one that made that statement, yeah. actually. And I was wondering if they brought this documentation in. It appears that some documentation has come in. Yeah. Well, we are well, we all are very well aware how Facebook and these pages can be manipulated. We're all aware of that. I mean, <laughs> this is something that's easy to do. There are women on Facebook that don't even exist. And they're bringing in Facebook postings to say, see how good we are. This isn't proof. This is non-substantial proof. Facebook. We already know what's happening in our elections with Facebook. It, it's a crime. It's phony. There's no, there's no proof in bringing Facebook articles and lightning stickers and saying we're a good business. I can generate probably a thousand likes on my Facebook page. <clears throat> it's easy to do. Madam Chairman, I think that uh, we have we have disputes. There are disputes with mm -hmm. this business. There's yes, there absolutely is. no question about it. Uh, it's back to our actions, mm -hmm. and our actions are that that uh, we now have a forum where we can talk about and discuss and decide what what to do going forward. Unfortunately, a lot of this never did come before us. Mm -hmm. I know. I'm directed to others. I was just going to say and yep. so same thing. To cut this off. Um, and not just for that, maybe that's bad language, but um, I, I, I would, I'm very, I'm very concerned. Oh, I, so, I, I feel the same way. I'm very concerned well, with this, Sharon's too. Sharon's got an input. Sharon? I just wanted, I called up the website for the information, contact information. There's no individual's name still listed, which still is listed one of the things the that we requested for the right, website. Right, there's just an email address, info, brookfieldauto.com. There's a fax number and a regular number. And there's a listing of hours, but there is no manager's name, there is no owner's name, there is no contact name for a secretary or the Because we asked system. him to correct all of that, and he said he would. He said just now that he had. Oh. So, so we're okay. We, we, can I reply to this? Go for it. Okay. We talked here last time, we talked about not being a correct address here because what the concern was, some people are not good with internet. Any, you know, things of that nature. So what we did is, you can show you that, we went and we actually put in the our PO box like we discussed last time. So if somebody wanted to write a letter without, you know, using internet, all they have to do is go on our website and take a look. It's like, I believe it's on the top and on the bottom. The PO box address is there. So if somebody wants to write a regular letter, they can easily do that. So they just generically assign it to the manager of the order? What, the email or the mail? Yeah. The email, yes, there's a generic email that goes into us. It's not going into garbage. I mean, if somebody writes something, we'll get it. I mean, uh, you know, this. Uh, some people put personal names, some people don't put personal names. Sometimes employees change. You know, you usually don't put somebody's name, unless it's a salesperson <coughs> who wants everybody to call him or write to him. So for complaints, it's usually a generic form, but it goes to the appropriate address. So do we have the correct address and contact information yes. today? Yes. All right. 
did he didn't it's right on the front did he page. get empty? He was supposed to get yeah, this is the this is the front page. So if we had any more complaints coming. Back. And uh, how does that come but, but, but did he give you his name and address and the phone number? It is on the website. Pardon me? It is on the website. Yeah, but then what we have is no, Sharon no. conflicting that. Well, no, well, what's on there, the address is on the website. There's no contact names or indications of who owns the business. Mm -hmm. So yeah. if you're, yeah, so if you were. require that. No. We requ require right. contract information. Right. So we, okay, so. Sharon, we didn't ask that they put the contact information on the website. What we asked them to do is have, have what he has pro provided us. So he did do that. Where well, I, I think I'm still hung up is that, and if you guys are having a separate conversation, I apologize. We have the contact yes, information. Have, uh, so so before, yeah. before this license gets signed, how this license gets signed, I'm still not, not sure how that happens. Yeah. But that you must go see the town clerk and he must have your act actual contact information. Sure. If he doesn't, I don't care about whether you're in business or not by some state organization, we need the exact contact information by the town clerk. Because if somebody comes in to complain, they're gonna to come yeah. to the town clerk and they're gonna ask. And we wanna be it's able to feedback. Now the, the other concern yeah. that I know that has been expressed on a couple of different To ensure that they're capable of fulfilling all of the obligations of an auto dealer. Mm -hmm. Okay. So our request for the transaction model is probably a little late to have it available at this time. Okay. Um, I don't know that if there's similar patterns of reports and behavior to what we have seen over the last year regarding your business that we would ever consider this again without that information substantially mm. provided. Mm. You mean the logbook of all transactions? Whatever you feel would be appropriate financial documentation that indicates it's a true going business related to auto dealership in the town of Brookfield. Whatever you'd like. That's easy to provide. Yeah, that's yeah. That really is easy to provide. So you want the financial transactions, purchases, sales, purchases, sales? Mm. It's a logbook. E either either logbook, log yeah, yeah, the logbook or something. Right. Sure. I mean, yeah. We have to keep that from more vehicle than everybody. Yeah. That's well, yeah, yeah. I, was, I was thinking in terms of balance sheet, but 10K is actually probably a right financial statement. Yeah, you yeah. 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 file a 10K. Yeah. Sure. Right? So 10K? 10K. It's a financial document. It says, right. says that the Secretary of State or. Uh, well, income tax return. It's it's similar to an income, income tax return, but it's a business tax. Okay. Well, if he's an LLC, he wouldn't do a 10K. Mm -hmm. It's only it's only a corporation would do a 10K. LLCs okay. are filed as individual personal income, even though they're All right. separate. So, yeah. yeah, so your Schedule your, your strategy was to look at the logbook. Right? Yeah. Okay. So, we'll so so we have we have a meeting with the town clerk mm -hmm. to verify that he has the addresses, contact information <clears throat> complete, and you have a request that the uh, the a review of the logbook. Yes. Now, who should be presented to? The, the log, but yeah. we would like that here in the Sorkin's you know, office, so I could look at it with that. Are you saying going forward, or are you saying no. immediate? That, that, that you're capable of being in business? Yeah. Okay. And then you were also supposed to meet with the town clerk so that he's going to sign off saying that you don't have to register with him in the town. Okay. okay. He's got, he's got, we are going to have the contact information. Yeah. Okay. Fills up that form or another form. Mike is going to have the contact information. But I, I would like to also see his that you registered with the Secretary of State also. So we can check that online. Can we? Yeah. Oh, sure. Yeah. Is it under Brookfield Auto? 
here going forward because I have Michael I mean we saw tires it's, I don't know what else to go with that actually I have Michael's snow tires in my shop still from where he left them so if you have a problem with snow tires Michael I can give you your snow tires back I actually asked him if he wanted me to bring them with me this evening in wondering if you were going to be here you told me to leave your building you're going to have an arrest I never said that to you but so you need you need to resolve that yeah, you need to resolve and and, and where, where what I would put forward is a motion uh, that the motor to issue the permit on a probationary period such that um, the town clerk information yeah. is reviewed and the uh, log books be, re be reviewed and that you report back how how yeah, and again, it can be a negative as far as how you've resolved mm -hmm. the complaints that we know of. Today. But what's the other? I've got two gentlemen here that have spoken negatively this evening. Well, the other gentleman, as we discussed last week, was not concerned about getting his vehicle fixed. He wanted three thousand dollars for some marijuana growing lamps that he sold to the manager. Okay. So, 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 which has nothing to do with the motor vehicle like situation at all. Okay. I mean, which we Go ahead multiple times. You're something else. You are something else. I came into your shop. Sir, please. Wait, sir, please. please. Director, no, you got it. No, direct, no, and no, ar no, no argument. I oh, will shut I you off. I came into their shop in July because they just reopened. I chased them for over a year. For over a year I chased these guys trying to get this resolved. Madam Chair, through you, may I ask a question? Of the gentleman. Okay. What 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 issues still exist on the vehicle that the that has, should that it should not have been transferred to you in that condition? So go ahead. The fourth tire, the fifth tire is a spare. Yeah, I remember you said so that in the, the gas tank. It's never been repaired, and I wasn't even asked for a new top. These guys are ridiculous. I said stitches, saw it, fix it, so it don't rip no more. I'm not asking for a lot, a lot, and then. It's a gas tank pan that holds the gas tank up. They had duct taped it and painted it black so you couldn't see it. My son, the day I bought it, put his finger through it and they said they would take care of it. These three issues. Now, in addition, the manager stole personal property from me. I told this person in July when I, when I went to see him, when they first opened their doors, I asked him. But didn't you say that was the previous manager? No, it's a, yes, it was the previous manager, but Boris is the owner. Mm -hmm. The same for Ukraine. You don't bury your mistakes and go like this and say it's over. He's still responsible for that person's actions. This is rule of law you're talking about. He's still responsible. You can't buy somebody and say we're not going to hold that agreement anymore. It's a, it's a contract that was held with the business, not the manager. Now, when I saw him in July, I says, hey, there's Boris or the other individual who was the manager still own this. And he said, no, they got nothing to do with it. And I told him, this is why I'm looking for him. There's $3,000 worth of equipment they took from me, and I need these things fixed on my car. I wasn't just strong on them. This is the value of the equipment that was taken from me. I told them I'd be happy to get 50% of that back at this point. I've been chasing them so long to fix my car. And by the way, I spoke to JK Auto today and they said, bring the car down and we'll fix it. But I want them to do it because they're responsible for it. Well, Madam Chairman. Nobody said it's $3,000. Okay, Madam Chairman, there are disputes. Yes, I, I and, understand And that. so that these gentlemen are in business mm -hmm. and they have disputes. We are not empowered to correct their mistakes no, or anything else. It's not else. up to us. So, so that I'm now at three things. Contact with the town clerk mm -hmm. to assure that we have the correct contact information, the correct forms. We have the 
need to review the logbook, yeah. and we would like a formal letter from the business as to the mm -hmm. current conflicts and how mm -hmm. you're going to resolve them. Positive or negative? I understand. Can I add one little thing? Yep. And I was going to suggest, like you had, about either a. From the three places that I went to for estimates, the tires. Sears and Roebuck, Mount Fair Tire, and Walmart. They all give a 30 day free trial with the tires. You can bring about anything back to Walmart and they'll take it back if you don't like it. The Rubber Manufacturing Association recommends the value of the new replacement of the tires to bring that tire to the place. Lifetime balance includes balancing the location of the tire to the length of the tire. The original vehicle is installed. I'm just five. Now I travel. If I have a problem with a tire on the road, I can go to a Walmart complex. Hang on. Or a theater. We could resolve that that day. The size is only three years old. He has a dealership over there. I'm sure he didn't use that tire on one of his used cars. But he didn't want to make it good. He stuck the money in his pocket and ran. He seen that I got the loan from the credit union. He was so much called the thing. He had to have that money that was in my pocket. I had already been to Walmart. I had already told him. But he told me he could do better because he was a deal. I figured somebody he had it in the time. I was in the truck with him all my life. I had a deal with a man of tire in Harvard, Massachusetts, but I could buy the tire for the same price as everybody else. I made three hundred and thirty-five dollars for two hundred and sixty dollars. I thought he had the same deal. And you know the way they run this place, it's fraud. It's all very fraud. I was involved with the FBI. And the fraud case was very good to look for about 20 years ago at the time of the same They were stealing the houses. Alan Mason, the attorney, and two dozen calls, the son and father, the attorneys in Oxford, went to jail because of my testimony before a federal jury. This is fraud. So if I may, just to address that. So, town fair and everybody gives you a 30 day guarantee to return your tires and buy another set of tires from them. Um, what Mr. <coughs> Master Totoro told me when he came into my story, he told me that he'd spoken to Cooper and they had already told him that they will refund. He should be able to get his money back. He did go to Cooper. That's the email I provided you. They contacted me to find out. I had to send them over a copy of the invoice that I'd sent them. And I also sent them a copy of the invoice that I already given you last week or two weeks ago from Kyle's, um, and which had the cost on it. They wanted that from me because they wanted to see how much was charged, what was done, and everything like that. They did state to him, they said, we never told him that he would get his money back, that we would gladly transfer that money to another set of tires for him, which was something he would not accept, which was something he would not accept from us, which was something he would not accept from anyone. When I told Michael that I would gladly give him his money back, I just need to find out how I would be made whole, that is when Michael said to me, look, I'm not gonna eat these tires, you can put them on another used car, I don't care. And that's when he got belligerent in my showroom. I don't understand why he did it. I don't, I don't understand anything about it. But that is what happened. I can have documentation from Chrissy. I have documentation. I can give David on the phone. Again, I'm more than happy to fix anything that's going wrong. But please understand. I've asked this gentleman twice. I asked him in July, and I asked him when he was in the showroom prior to giving me the complaint that day. He, that complaint he gave me was from over a year ago that I'd be more than happy to fix his car. And he said, no, I want money for this. I've asked Michael, I said, no problem, I will work with you. However, no, I want this. I'd be more than happy to take care of these things, but I'm more than willing to give. I cannot work with that. I've given you plenty of documentation to show what I'm telling you to be true. I did not make a lot of money on it. When I called Kyle's, it was $85 to have him put on the car. I said, can you just give him my price and send him down there? She said, no. How much is it for me? $67.50. Great. I had to pay David $12.50, which is a half an hour. He's more than willing to get on the phone and talk about that. Again, guys. So this is not what I do. And then so, there was another complaint, too, 
It was, this was bad, Karen. Didn't he put in writing another complaint that was a gentleman that came in and said that he had bought a car from, you, from down from you? And he said that um, he traded in his other vehicle and it was his understanding that you were going to be paying off his loan. Okay, that was the complaint that you have in the folder. That was, it also wasn't Arthur, it was the previous, but, but still, um, previous I mean, management. But right. I understand that, but I'm wondering saying, yeah. if right. that was if that was resolved, because this man said that the car was repossessed, the um, vehicle. Right, the vehicle was repossessed from what I understand. Right, when you he, show me that one. And he said that it, it wrecked his credit. So he said he was paying two payments. And, and ownership hasn't changed. Management may have changed, yeah. but ownership right. hasn't Ownership changed. hasn't. So was that problem ever rectified? I can find out for you like uh, in the next two days. I ran into him um, at um, a Dollar General, and I told him that he was going to be continued today. He said he's just going to let it go. I encouraged him to do that. So... I think what we have yeah. is what the, the third thing that I had on yeah. my list now was that we have two complaints that are sitting in the room. Right. Mm -hmm. We have a third complaint rel related to the pay paying off of a vehicle with the bank. And I think that this Slockland deserves yes. a formal cor correspondence. Mm -hmm. Put this together in a nice little package that says this is the problem. Mm -hmm. This is how you remediated whatever that was, mm -hmm. such that we have uh, an understanding as to where you stand on at least these three complaints. Could I ask one more thing? Yeah. As far as the complaints, uh, what I'd like to do is send both of these gentlemen a letter, certified letter, so we can proof, have a proof that it was received, because maybe it's possible that they won't reply or whatever. The, the, and, the, and we're supposed to get a reply that says this is what we want. And at least that will show that we are communicating. That's why we select yes. board, I'm speaking for us yeah. now, yeah. we would like your response sure. to the three complaints mm -hmm. such that we have that and we look to you as the business right. to take whatever steps are necessary mm -hmm. to resolve this thing. Right. Um, th those are your responsibilities. What I will say is that given these provisos, we have the information we, and we have the, the uh, what you're doing about the uh, complaints. The, this document that we're about to sign or that I would recommend that we sign is on a probationary basis mm -hmm. that if within 30 days that we do not have this information to us that this doc that, that yeah, it, I agree we're on, done. Yeah, I agree but 100%. Could I ask one more thing? Yep. I, I know that now that you've said that, I mean this fine gentleman, I'm sure they're gentlemen, but they have a motivation now to not to negotiate anything at all. Well, there, it, 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 we're, we're looking for you to tell us what you're going to do. Okay. Even, even, if, even, if, even if it's, it's, it's nothing, answer. it's still an answer. Well, we, huh? we even if your answer is to do nothing, that, it's still an answer. A, we want a letter from them stating how they are going to rectify, rectify or, your mm -hmm. problem. So we'll put our offer right. and we'll wait for a reply. And yeah. who was the third the one? It's in, it's I'm in large trouble. Okay. From 19 to October 12th, Is this it not? Yeah. Is this the one? I was in the closed blue book in the program. I did this all my life. This was the you one, I guess. Right? Right? What? The you can see my record is flawless. And That's I'm the flawless one. I want this one correctly too. Can I make a copy of it? Yeah, that's easier. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We understand that. Oh, no, no, he's not here. He's, he's well, not here. It's okay, no. Does he have his name? I didn't want to move. I'm going to make a copy for you. Yeah. yeah. We're going to make a copy for you of the one there that had the vehicle repossessed after the bank. So maybe you can get in touch with him. So, again, my motion yeah. would be. That we sign the, the mm -hmm. business uh, license mm -hmm. on a probationary basis yep. and mm -hmm. that uh, we look to the business to fulfill on the three, three things that we listed. I agree with that. How do you want to handle the business? Well, you can can you get in this? I'd like to look at it, both of us. I'm giving us 30 days, basically. Yeah, we get 30 days. So I'm sure we'll give us 30 days. Okay. So, do you want me to make copies of the changes? No. Yes. I mean, if you can. No. Make it. no.
Copies of it? No, I'd like to. I'd like to sit here with you. Do you want to make an appointment to go down there? Because it's like. He just could he so just could come up here to. and bring it up here to the office. Yeah, yeah, that would work. I'd like to and I mean if you want to make arrangements to go down there and look at it, it's up to you if you want to. information such that we have con accurate con information that the complaints that we uh, that have come before us we want formal notification uh, as to where where they stand with those um, what was the first thing I'm missing something oh and you're reviewing the could I ask one more question uh, the three complaints about the vehicle I just didn't know thanks Bert uh, what was it Roof. The tear in the top. Unfortunately, we have to handle document otherwise now. So document. Yeah. Yeah. That's something that I that's mean, what they want. If, if they have, have some personal property of of you, if that's something that really doesn't go along with us with our agreement. It, it has to, it would have to actually go through the police. It's going to go through you or a court or something to retain it back. Not So it doesn't have anything really to do with our discussion yeah, we don't tonight have at all. Unfortunately, we don't have jurisdiction no. over something that's trading coming. No. Yeah. We, we will still try to, to fix it. Wasn't some of that so. partial so well, in the course. But again, like they said correctly, that's a police matter in general. Well, but we will try to work it. Issue you're well, aware it well, I wasn't aware of the, what, right. what happened. That, that doesn't have anything to do with our story. conversation tonight. No, we, separate separate story. Story. We, have, we have another meeting after this. Okay, so I'd like to make a um, So we have a motion. A motion. I will I just, stop it. I'll stop it. Second. Okay. Any further discussion Any on the motion? Any further discussion? And Beth, I will get back to you. We'll see. Great. 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 Thank right. you. And we will get back okay. to you as far All as right. the visitation. Okay. And if we need to do it separately, then I'll, I'll swing by on site and they can bring it up here for you at your convenience. Okay. Oh, oh we can go out? Oh, we can't really go down to that one. No, we can. We can do an on site visit. So we could actually do an on site visit together so long as no policies discussed. It's yeah. just like when the Board of Health goes out to yeah. look at properties, no yeah. policies discussed. Yeah, we could do it either. We'll, I'll see what day is good and then I'll have Karen get back. Okay. Could you notify us too? When you're coming? <coughs> so maybe I can do that? <laughs> Getting him there is a trip. Yeah, that's yeah. Uh, when? After Christmas. Oh, after Christmas. Yeah, it's 27 so it. or 28. We'll Thursday or Friday. Just see if you could maybe give us a call and let us know you're coming. Oh, okay. So as long as we have your contact information, we will give you a call. Do you want to be, give me a business card again? <laughs> 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 All right. Okay. I said so, that one too many times, so we need a vote. Okay, all in favor of granting a temporary license or a Aye. on probation?
So you need more germs so that way you don't get sick. Yeah. Okay. I touch enough people all day. I ate enough dirt. All right, I'll prove it. Okay. All right. Now we would like the oral session. Certainly. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, now our next session is we would like to go into executive session under number three to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining or litigation. If any open meeting may be detrimental effect in the bargaining or litigation position of the public body and the chair so declared. So I would like to go and um, adjourn this meeting at uh, 7.50 and um, go into executive session and then we'll vote to go back into regular session to meet. Uh, adjourn. Do you have a motion? So, um, Lincoln second. I. Oh, you have a second. Lincoln, I. Snyder. Coughlin, I. Okay.